Happy Friday, friends. Welcome back to A Daily Walk Devotions. Here we are at the end of another week. And currently, we're going through the epistle written by James, who was the half-brother of Jesus. James the Just, church history tells us, a believer in Jesus Christ, a leader in the early church, and um, a powerful witness for the Lord. And here he's writing a letter to the 12 tribes, believers who were scattered abroad, Jewish people in every direction. Of course, not just to the Jews, but it also applies to us. But initially, this letter was written with a certain group of people in mind. And James has exhorted us to count it all joy when we fall into various trials because we know something's being produced in us. We know that God's working it into our lives for a purpose that we don't always understand. I would say that the majority of the depth of spiritual character that we have in our lives is a direct result to what the Lord has allowed us to go through and brought us through, and and it's really shaped our trust in God, our belief in the promises of God, and brought a depth of character that could not otherwise be developed. Now, James goes on to say here, still in the first chapter, verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now James tells us about the importance of wisdom. You know, sometimes when you're going through trials, you're to rejoice in it, you're to yield to it, he told us that. But also, if you lack wisdom, Lord, what is going on? Wisdom, I need your wisdom. And I do believe that there is a difference between wisdom and knowledge. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 2, in verse 6, that the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is so important. Paul drew a contrast. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he drew a contrast between the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. It was there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that Paul said, the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. And, and how can he know them? Because they are spiritually discerned. Listen, when it comes to wisdom, it starts with me recognizing my need for wisdom. I don't always know what to do. I don't always know what direction the Lord wants to take me. And so I want to seek him. He encourages me to seek him. He encourages me to seek wisdom. And if I seek the Lord, he will provide the wisdom and the direction that I need for whatever situation he's directing me to go. I'm I'm not sure what to do. Is there anything like that in your life right now, today? He just say, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about this family situation. I have, I have tried, I've prayed, and I'm just, I don't, I don't know what to do. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Maybe it's a job situation. You know, I, I really, I applied for this job, and it doesn't seem to be opening, and I'm not sure if this, I don't know what to do. Maybe you're a parent today, and you're watching this and thinking, ah, oh, I need wisdom. I don't know what to do with this kid. I've, try, I've tried. We're trying to hold him accountable. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. Provide boundaries because we love them. They're getting upset. They don't. Maybe you got a teenager. Whoa, that's a whole nother level. Or a toddler. Either way, it's still challenging. What do you do? God, give me wisdom. And he says, and he promises that he'll provide the wisdom that you need. Maybe you're leading a church. Oh, Lord, that's my prayer. Give me wisdom. I don't know how to do this apart from you. And God has been so faithful, guys, through the years just to provide wisdom for whatever situation I'm in. I realize my need for it. And then I ask for it. James says, ask. You know, the Bible says, ask. Jesus said, ask and it'll be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Do you know that the Lord wants to provide wisdom that you need? He's just waiting for you to ask. When was the last time you just sat down and asked the Lord for wisdom? Now, when we do ask, James tells us something. He tells us here in verse 6, ask in faith, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord because he's a double-minded man and unstable in all of his ways. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 33, the Lord declared, call unto me 
and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And when you call and when you ask for wisdom, you ask in faith, and by that, it means you trust that God's gonna give you what you need. It might be in that moment, it might be the next day, it might be a week later, but God will provide the wisdom if we're willing to seek him for it and willing to wait on him and receive it. Sometimes I'm not always willing to wait (laughs) for the wisdom I need, and yet God, calls me to wait. So I'm to ask in faith, and I'm to ask not with any doubting. Can I ask you a question? When you pray, do you believe that God's going to answer you? I mean, really, do you believe that he's going to answer you? Or do you doubt it? Uh, if we're honest, I'd say sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we're, we're fearful we might not get the answer we want. But, but if we believe that God's going to answer, then we should ask in faith. And God promises to provide what it is that we need. In fact, the writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And anybody that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him, Hebrews eleven six. 6. So I come by faith, trusting in him to give me what I need. And, and listen, if, you, if you're coming in the sense of, oh, I don't think God's gonna answer, I don't, then he says, listen, you're, you're unstable. What happens is if you come with that mentality, you, 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 it's one thing to battle doubts, okay? We all do. We, we all have doubts from time to time. But faith overcomes those things. And we can have confidence that when we pray to the Lord, he hears us. We know that he hears us. We know we have the things we've asked of him because we're praying by faith and we're trusting in him. But it's interesting here that James points out that you can be double-minded That's an interesting phrase. You can be double-minded, and if you are double-minded, do you know what happens? You're unstable. You're unstable in all your way. It's like you, yeah, but no, and and you just, there's no, there's no solid ground to land on. You're you're unstable. You're you're double-minded. And it's important that we come by faith, and we trust that the Lord is working all things together for good. Are, are you double-minded today? Or how about this, are you single-minded? The Bible talks about single-minded, trusting in God. Maybe you're, maybe you're facing some challenges today. I, I, I'm not surprised. We all do. We all do. What do you do? You ask God for wisdom. You wait to receive it. And when he provides it, you implement it. And you just you walk by faith. You're not tossed to and fro by feelings. You, you stand in faith. Friend, call upon the Lord today. He'll answer you. He knows what you need even before you ask it. And he is a good father willing to provide exactly what you need for the situation that confronts you today. Call upon him. He'll answer. God bless you. We'll see you next week.